And the way I thought I would spend a few minutes this morning talking to you was to do it through the lens of transparency. Because to us, a lot of what we've done in digital has been around this idea of transparency. So no secret to anybody here how connected we all are these days, right? Screens are so ubiquitous. In fact, I would say that screens are really good, like a lot of things are in moderation. At the same time, if you sort of, you know, go back maybe 30 years, um, there was once upon a time, scre screens were kind of the extreme example of evil. Who remembers this movie? Some people, yes, Poltergeist, 30 years ago. So you had a uh, uh, evil force coming through the television to uh, capture the beloved little girl and bring her inside the television. And as you may remember in the final scene of Poltergeist, the father shoving the television out of the motel room as a way to kind of get rid of screens. And if you think about today, he'd have to shove, what, 10, 15 devices out of the room if he, uh, if he wanted to get rid of all screens. But you know what I would say is today's screens are anything but scary. They're really beloved. And um, the way that we access information, whether it was originally through search and being able to discover what we were looking for and discover things that we didn't even realize we were looking for, now through the social web and discoverability, um, we have really started to embrace screens, transparency, in all kinds of different forms. So um, I'm going to put out there a theory, which we subscribe to at GE. And to Debbie's point, we may not be the brand that you would expect to embrace this as heartily as we have. And that is that um, successful brands will be the ones that are the most transparent. Um, they will be the brands that will behave the way a person does online, not the way a big company does. We find at GE, the more accessible we are, the more human we are, the more we behave as a person. Every time we survey people, the more they want to come to work for us, the more they want to invest in the company, the more they want to partner with us. But you have to throw open the doors. If, in our case, we remain a company that is a big, diverse, industrial company, we don't put much of a face on it. So this idea of embracing transparency has become a real rallying cry for us at GA. Um, I would sort of give you a new metaphor, right? So if you think of the screens that are in your hands, all of you, at least one, I'm sure, as being kind of opaque, I would ask you to sort of think about the metaphor of a window instead, a window you can see through, a window that your consumers, your customers, your stakeholders, which vary, of course, for all of you, can see back through, can talk to you, can see what your company is about. So I think that's our metaphor going forward. It certainly is for GA. So you know, what's our mandate? When we think about sort of our 2025 media plan, our 2025 marketing plan, it's one that embraces transparency. Um, I, I put this up there, but you know, we think about this as a way to share, disseminate information rather than hold on to it, and rather than seek ways to control the message. If once upon a time, digital was a walled garden, feels like a really long time ago that that was the case. You know, think of it as an open field, right? Where going where people are versus asking them to come to where you are has to be the modus operandi. You know, we're proud of our website, ge.com. We post information there. I'm sure a lot of you have websites. I'm sure a lot of you post information there. Our website is primarily used by two audiences, investors and students looking for a job. And God bless both of them. We want them to have the best possible information. But I never kid myself, our teams never kid ourselves, that if we have content that we want people to engage with, content that we want them to share, we have to put it on the platforms where they're spending their time. And they're not waking up in the morning and saying, got to get to GE.com. So you know, keep that in mind. 
Websites, I think, aren't going away. I think if there was a point about a year ago where I said, wow, what is the role of the corporate website? I think it needs to be there. I just don't think it can be something where you can count on people coming to you to find information. Um, I can't help but put this slide up there because my team uh, just purchased a pair of Google Glass. So that everybody's walking around the office now with Google Glass. And uh, you know, when we think about transparency and we think about what's to come, it's funny, I, I know I debate, you know, which device do I want to carry? Do I want to carry one that's this size? Do I want to carry my mini tablet? Do I want something that's a bigger screen? Do I need my laptop? And it kind of masks where things are headed, right? You know, way before 2025, we're going to be seeing wearables, heads-up devices, Google Glass, driverless cars, and I think the screens that we're also attached to are going to kind of, you know, m merge and meld into, uh, into technology that's all around us. Maybe in two years, future M, you're all going to be sitting here with wearables, and that's how you're going to be getting the information. Um, so, you know, for us as a brand, how do we think about transparency? It's really been centered a great deal in the marketing space around content creation. How do we at GE think like a publisher? How do we storytell? You know, I, my husband always makes fun of me when I talk about storytelling. He's like, no, it doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound professional enough. But in the end, a great story well told as a marketer is one of the best things that you can do. And every brand has a great story to tell. I always say if a bar of soap, Dove, can tell the kind of stories they're telling. There isn't a brand in the world that can't figure out what their DNA is and how to tell that story. For GE, we have a really, really rich DNA. We are, um, our history is an industrial company. Um, we're 134 years old. We were founded by a man named Thomas Edison, who um, most of you may or may not know, was people think of as being famous for inventing the light bulb, actually, what he did was commercialize the light bulb. And that to us is kind of what we do every day. We commercialize invention. So when we think about transparency, we think about content creation, and we have created, as, as, as I'll show you, all kinds of different ways to develop content, share content, and find platforms that we think are places where we're going to be able to connect with different stakeholders. Um, this is an example of a microblog that we started about a year and a half ago called Technologist with an X. Um, Technologist isn't about GE. It's about the industries that we're in. It's about um, trends in energy or robotics or health or digital fabrication. We publish it on a weekly basis. It's gained a following of about 100,000 loyal readers. And it's a great way for us to be a thought leader not to chess beat, not to make it about us, but for our brand to be able to have these kind of conversations and, and frankly, more importantly, um, bring to life topics that we think are really important. Um, a fun one um, is uh, uh, the work that we've done. Debbie mentioned this on Vine. So what is a brand like GE doing on Vine? It's kind of crazy, right? So we were um, on, brand, on Vine the day it launched. I think it was uh, January 28th. Where's Eric? Eric will keep me honest. I think it was January 28th. So I got a phone call on a Sunday and, uh, from, from some of my, uh, my team, and they said, Vine's going up. We need to be on it. We went up that day. So to us, platforms like Vine, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, Instagram in a few minutes, Vine, Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, are a way for us to connect with people who share our passions about science and technology and innovation. We find that a lot of folks on these platforms are the all early adopters. They're the nerds. We love nerds. We're nerds, so it works really well. Um, and what we've tried to do, this was kind of a mantra for, for our team, is to own moments. That's the way we talk about it, right? What are moments that GE can lean into that um, allow us to have a conversation about science, about technology, 
So we went up on Vine, as I say, day one, with a, with a great short little Vine. Everybody knows, I presume, what Vine is, six second clips. Um, we then, uh, as you'll see in a, uh, in a moment, in a video, um, created a Vine that was a science experiment. Um, we took a little saucer of milk and some food dye. So nobody in this audience can tell me they can't afford a saucer of milk and a little food dye and put a Q-tip in it. And, you know, the colors sort of spirograph out and it's really beautiful. Um, and it was kind of our inspiration because that vine did so well. So we said, well, wait a minute. We can be doing this in a, in a, in a bigger way. And we created a six-second virtual science fair on Vine. So why don't we play the video so you can uh, get a sense of what I'm talking about. So the second thing that you saw there called Gravity Day is another way that we've kind of embraced these moments of science. So starting at the beginning of 2012, we looked for opportunities to be very real time. So a lot of you remember the Super Bowl. Who was the brand that kind of got the credit in the Super Bowl? Oreo. So hats off to Oreo. So thoughtful, right? You know, they just, they were prepared and then they were able to be spontaneous. Um, that's kind of lightning in a bottle, right? You just don't know when that's gonna strike. So we said, well, wait a minute, maybe there's another way to think about this. So we started on uh, February 11th, which happens to be Invention Day, it's Thomas Edison's birthday, and we invited people to send us blueprints, send us their ideas for invention. And we literally created blueprints that we sent out to folks. Got a lot of attention, was a great way to connect. A month later, on March 14th, who's really awake this morning? 314, Pi Day, yes. Hopefully that wasn't somebody who knew it already. Um, we said, okay, we're gonna celebrate math, right? Math, science, things that we care a lot about. And um, you know, we tweeted, put posts up all day long about, uh, about math and science. And then at 314.159 in the afternoon, every, the first 314 people who tweeted us got a pie, a P-I-E pie. Apple, cherry, blueberry that we sent out to them. So it was a lot of fun. And then most recently on, nine, on uh, September 8th, which is the force of gravity, Gravity Day, and we celebrated with uh, uh, what they call a drop catch, which is very popular on Vine. And we also did a, 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 a partnership with Dots, where the, the very popular game, I don't know if anybody here is as obsessed with Dots as I am, Got to get it off my phone. Um, but we did a gravity mode on dots. So, um, uh, you know, sort of sticking with this theme of um, industry, GE, we like to say, is a new kind of industrial company. But we're a company with industry at our core. We have factories around the world. We make things. We make really big iron. And we're one of the few companies left that make really big iron. And again, we embrace this. You know, a big part of transparency is embracing who you are, figuring it out, figuring out what that connection is, but sort of sticking to, to who you are. Know yourself, right? That's the first, first principle in a lot of ways. So this idea of, of machines and machines and uh, data that connect is something that we talk about as, as uh, brilliant machines. And um, not quite as early as Vine, but about two years ago, we went up on Instagram. Um, there were a few other brands on there, but not very many. And uh, somebody in, on my team, because I have this fabulous team, as Debbie mentioned, um, said, look, I want to experiment a little bit with Instagram. I think it could be 
a great forum for us. And that's how it started. It was an experiment. And what it's turned into is this fabulous way for GE to kind of throw open the factory doors and allow people to come in and see our machines at their biggest, at their most beautiful, in situ. Um, it's given people a real glimpse into who we are. So um, what I want to show you now is uh, uh, kind of industrial eye candy. It's a combination of some of the Instagram work we've done, some of the videos we've done, some work on Twitter. And I, I, I think you'll, you'll see how we're starting to tell this story of brilliant machines in an unvarnished way, but in a really fun, engaging way. So if we can show the next video. UFO Society founder Gary Wojciechowski had just finished correcting grammar in a blog comment when his truck noted a disturbance in the town's magnetic field. Datalandia was under siege by menacing outer space aliens. Dollar jet pilot Buck Armbruster was imagining himself without a mustache. I don't know. Trust me. When sensors in his engines detected more drag than usual and unidentified traffic appeared on his radar. That can't be good. The engines relayed this information to flight traffic controller Cheryl Brubecker, who picked the wrong week to quit Mochaccinos. The flight management system generated new flight plans for all aircraft in the vicinity. A broadcast satellite uplink truck sent data to the distributed computing center, which decrypted the alien language. The public utilities company flashed light patterns in alien Morse code, sending the aliens back to their planet with bruised egos and a few souvenir cows. Welcome to Datalandia, a small town saved by big data. So uh, Datalandia was a way for us to translate what we call the industrial internet, the marriage of big iron and big data. So I think often storytelling is finding accessible ways to translate. And uh, it was one that, uh, uh, that uh, we had a lot of fun doing. So look, you know, for us, uh, content creation isn't brand new. Um, way back in the 50s, Ronald Reagan hosted the GE Theater. So we have a legacy of this. We didn't make it up in the last two years. So it's, it's kind of nice to follow that legacy. Um, what I think is interesting, uh, this is a quote from the photographer Henri Cartier-Bresson, who talked about the decisive moment, right? That fraction of a second where you capture something. And I actually think that uh, we're in a time where we're really thinking about liquid moments. Right? It's not about that one decisive moment. It's about being always on, about finding ways to connect at the intervals, not necessarily at that single precious moment. Um, you know, For GE, we, we continue to embrace 
advertising. We're, we're super proud of what we're doing on, uh, on television. But we're just as proud of the constant feed that we have out there of content. We post every day on Facebook, on Twitter. We're constantly on Instagram, on Pinterest, on Vine. We've tried other things. We've tried some things that we haven't stuck with. Viddy, social cam, good things, but we just, you know, we haven't, you know, they weren't as effective for us. But um, to us, we've put a premium as a brand that has stood for invention and innovation for 134 years. We want to be reflective of that in our marketing. And a piece of that is being on these new platforms where they're early adopters. So, you know, that's been quite important to us. Um, so, you know, 2025 media plan, which luckily I haven't been asked for yet, but, uh, but I think it would be characterized by this, you know, this idea of driven even more than we currently are by constant engagement with our customers and citizens on a much more personalized level. Act as a person. Be human. Put a face to your brand. So a couple sort of, you know, thoughts as to things that may happen as, uh, as we work toward this 2025 um, media plan. Um, you know, we're already starting to see live ads. You started to see them during the Olympics last year with AT&T. Um, I, I think we are not far from a point where feeds will be replacing what are traditional spots as a dominant form of delivery. Certainly real time will be kicking in this idea of deciding on a theme three months ahead of time and then spending time producing it and getting it on air, I don't know, guys. I don't know how, how lasting that's going to be. I think certainly there will be other ways of communicating. Um, tailored content, this is a really big one for GE. Hopefully it resonates with others out there. For us, transparency, content has never been about the biggest audience. It's been about the right audience. We really want to talk to people who, as I said before, share our passions. If you go to our Facebook page, it's right on top. You know, we, this page is for people who love science, invention, technology. Relevant contextual conversations matter to us so much more than, than being broad. And I, I, it sounds like you had a lot of conversation about mobile. You know, mobile is nothing if it's not right message, right time, right audience. And it's more efficient, guys, too. Um, and then our visual vocabulary. I mean, just, you know, I, you don't need me to stand here and tell you about, you know, the increase of video streams, the increase of how people are consuming things. You know, my, my kids are, um, are uh, uh, teenagers, almost young adults, and uh, Instagram is the way they communicate. I mean, it's, it's getting annoying. My daughter Instagrams her food before she <laughs> eats it. It's kind of silly, right? She takes a picture of it before she'll start to eat it. But that's, that's a new way to sort of think about things. Um, so the, the last note I, I want to hit, and then I, hopefully we have time for, for some questions, is this idea of inviting others in. So I've been talking about it primarily in a marketing context, which obviously I very much believe in. But at GE, what we've tried to do, particularly over the last couple of years, is say, how can we invent, invite others in to help us manufacture, to help us ideate, to help us come up with new product ideas? Things that, you know, I mean, we're proud, trust me. We've got thousands of scientists. You know, we, we are super proud of our inventions. But, you know, we also know that there are other ideas out there and that by opening those doors, we're going to have better ideas, more ideas, more diversity. So uh, let's just roll the last video and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. New ideas can come from anywhere. We just have to be open to them. Openness leads to inventiveness and usefulness. It means giving the right challenges to the right community with the right platform to get to the right place. It means new ways forward like open partnerships. GE partnered with Quirky to inspire new inventions using GE patents and the internet, like a tray that tells you when to buy eggs, and open platforms. GE and GrabCAD asked thousands of engineers to create a lighter jet engine bracket using 3D printing, resulting in hundreds of designs, some as much as 80% lighter. And open challenges. GE and Kaggle challenged developers and data scientists to reduce air traffic delays. The winner improved arrival time estimates by as much as 40%. When solving problems isn't a job for one person to manage, 
but an opportunity for a community to embrace. That's what it means to open the door and invite others in. You know, what I, what I always love when I, when I watch this is, um, you know, you've certainly, I'm sure, seen open innovations. Pepsi did something a couple years ago that was great, the Pepsi Challenge. I am just astounded when we ask people, just regular people, to help us think through and redesign a lighter hinge for a jet engine, what kind of ideas come in. It's remarkable. So, you know, clearly it, it, it really does take a village. So, um, look, I, I think transparency is critical. I think knowing your brand, knowing who you are, and figuring out the right way to tell that story through different kinds of media and thinking about what the right message is for that media and being open to new ideas, that's kind of, you know, how we're thinking about today and how we're thinking about, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, the, the next 10, 15 years. So with that, I think I have a few minutes for questions. I have five minutes for questions. So um, love to hear any thoughts, any questions. Yes, just speak loudly. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, thanks for the question because it also allows me to say something which I forgot, which is I have an awesome team and we have an awesome roster of agencies that, I mean, are fantastic, really fantastic. We work with a lot of folks. We're very promiscuous, <laughs> I guess, in that way. And, uh, and that's been, uh, please don't tweet that in some weird way. <laughs> um, um, so that's been really helpful. But what, we've start, what we have done, and we are doing this increasingly, in fact, we had a shoot in Ohio two days ago, is we're trying to go into a shoot with kind of what I would call like a three-headed approach. So let's say it's a shoot for a television ad. We're not, we're, we're saying, okay, how do we capture Instagram footage? How do, how do we capture, hey Larry, how do we capture Vine? And you know, it's a good question in terms of what you save. Uh, you know, on some of the longer form stuff, yes, we save it. You don't want it to be too stagey, so I think there's that balance, and you kind of got to feel for what's right, you know. So at this shoot two days ago, even though it was a shoot for a, a video that's going to come out in a couple weeks, we were tweeting stuff out, we were posting things on Vine right from the shoot. So I think it's a little bit of a balance. Sure. Yes. Yeah, I heard Dunkin' Donuts was here. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Um, and I, I, I heard Dunkin' Donuts was here and was just fabulous in that regard. So. You know, um, I'll, 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 try, I'll answer directly um, in that I think some of the things we showed, Vine in particular is young. You know, Vine is, is started with, I think, high school kids. It's starting to age up, if you look at the demographics, into college kids. So what I showed you was all generated outside of GE, with the exception of the little milk in the saucer. Everything came from somebody else. So we do feel like by using some of these platforms, we are having conversations with more and more young people. Having said that, to sort of address your question a little bit more broadly, um, we have been, over the last couple of years, quite active going to universities. Um, I didn't speak about it at all this morning, but advanced manufacturing, digital fabrication, um, super important to the future of, of our company and I think the, the future of a lot of industry. So we created something that we call GE Garages that's kind of a, you know bringing the lab to life. There's 3D printers, there's CNC printers, it's super cool injection molding, and we've been taking it to campuses. It was actually here in Boston about a year ago. Um, we've taken it to Rice, we've taken it to Virginia Tech, and what we found is um, 
it just captures people's imagination. We've had young people, as young as 14, come in and, and literally you know, spend a couple hours doing this and say, oh my god, I didn't realize that this was a future career path. So I, I feel good about that. I think there's more and more we can all be doing with youth, but I feel good about that. Maybe, yep, one or two more, yeah? Mm. Yeah. So the way my team talks about this, which I like a lot, is um, um, campfires and, and forest fires. So what we try to do is, um, uh, is, is, is have some of those forest fires, right? Like a gravity day, a pie day, things like that, that we'll spend some, some time leading up to. Some of our bigger video projects, Datalandia. Uh, and, you know, I think if you do too many of those, A, you can't afford it, and B, you sort of step on yourself a little. So we do a content meeting every Monday. We look at what's coming up on sort of, you know, channel by channel. Um, what are themes that we're going to be talking about? You know, we just did something big on the industrial internet in Chicago about a week ago. So we try to kind of keep the steady hum going and at the same time look out at least a month or so at a time, ideally a quarter at a time, as to what's coming up and kind of manage it that way. So do I have time for one more? One more. Yes. It's a great question to end on. Um, so we, um, because GE is a branded house, not a house of brands, we are fortunate in that we are um, beholden to the brand of GE. Um, we believe in sort of brand metrics, like w what you would call upper funnel metrics. So we look very hard every single day at brand sentiment. You know, we use like everybody else a, a, a brand sentiment tool. I guess we're on our third or fourth at this point, but you know, in the end, they tell you the same thing. Um, so every day we look at our share of positive sentiment, and we do this against a competitive set. So you know, we look at how some others are doing. Um, so that's a, that's a real sort of feel it every day kind of way of looking at this. We do polling on a quarterly basis, um, very rigorous sort of political style polling as to what's breaking through from a brand and reputation point of view. Um, and, um, uh, and, and we do other kind of tracking studies. Um, we are increasingly getting more sophisticated on social selling. So how do we use some of the social tools which I didn't speak about at all today, such as LinkedIn, to um, intersect with our customers, to sell. Um, how do we use Twitter to reach vertical communities as Twitter and Facebook too now allow more and more targeting? We're looking to sort of connect the dots between the top of the funnel and the bottom of the funnel. But on the brand sentiment, reputation, metric side, um, you know, we, we, we look at that constantly. So look, guys, thank you. It's great to be here. It's great to be in Boston. Go Red Sox. Um, thanks for being such a good audience.